everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking T-Shirt. Today we're going over the Agilite K19. Now, real quick, what is my relation to Agilite? I do like full disclosures. I met them at SHOT Show, and they essentially, they, they for whatever reason seem to like me, even though I make a bunch of edgy humor about Israeli conflicts and stuff like that. But that aside, I do love them. I think they're really fun guys. They have a great sense of humor, and they always play ball with whatever I can dish out. Now, today in specifics, we're gonna look at the Agilite K19, and it's in its true configuration with mainly pretty much what they sent me, and that's gonna be all of the Agilite products on here. I'll give you my thoughts, opinions on it real quick. Now, keep in mind, full disclaimer, I'm just a dude on the internet wears a balaclava, so take everything I say and do with a grain of salt, as you should, because the internet is a weird place, and if you don't know this yet, then I guess your first day on the internet, so. Sorry I had to break the news to you. So before we go any further, before we go any further, I need you to like, and subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below because I know you're on the toilet, I know you're watching this, maybe you're laying in bed consuming your beer or coffee, whatever you're consuming, I don't know. But make sure you get down there. I really do love those comments. Also, this video is sponsored by myself. Buy some merchandise if you want to support the channel. It really helps out as well as the Patreon. I love making these videos for you guys, so it really does help out. Okay, back to the video. Since we're gonna dive on in, I'll give you the quick little context. So I've used this a fair amount, uh, a little bit on the flat range. I've been using it in my videos on the flat range. Typically, whenever I need a Hebrew weaponry system, I use it in the Tavor video. I use it with the Uzi video. And I even went to the Milsom West event in Victorville, California, and I used the K19 because I needed a good OD green looking plate carrier to help with that op 4 identification for the NATO guys. And this worked out rather well at this little job. Now, how I ran it at Victorville, I ran it a little bit different for the Milsom event because I didn't really need AR style mag pouches, so I next aid those. And then I was using uh, just essentially a, a, a one singular mag pouch and then two spare mag pouches for pistol and or tools and then a radio pouch. Essentially what I needed, but I did need the armor so I could run two tourniquets based off the Milsom West rule set. Now the armor in there is gonna be just some Defender armor, and I didn't run it with the back panel, the little backpack setup. Now I do like the backpack, but I also don't. It's a weird little mix because I, I myself, I don't like the idea of potentially having to rely on a person to help me out when it comes to getting stuff off my person. I mean, if you are running a plate carrier, hopefully you do have friends with you that can help you out but in the odd event that you are alone. I wanna be able to access stuff. So me personally, a little assault pack would replace this a lot better. I do like it. I like their intention with it and I understand that. I know the guys over in Israel maybe run some different SOPs and how they run stuff with their team units and stuff like that. But the assault pack is actually pretty little slick but I would probably ditch it if I had to if I was going to run a rucksack with it like I did at Milsom West. I just ran a slick back and I'd throw my ruck on top. And I did have the intention of running a salt pack, but typically when we stepped off to go on a patrol or something like that, it was usually so short that I'd left everything at back at our patrol base, and I would just step off without an assault pack. Now, moving to the front panel real quick. So, in the front, what we got going on here is their Agilite triple, essentially like their speed reinsertion mag. I'm probably forgetting the name of it, which I know I am. But essentially, you can pull out your mags and re-index them, no problem. Got the Star of David for some Israeli good luck. And then they have their own in-house style dangler pouch. Danglers, of course, being coming very popular amongst plate carriers and gear, uh, as well as chest rigs. Just another method of real estate for you to be able to store stuff. And then off to the side, I have one of their singular mag pouches for the quick reinsertion. Now, I'm a big fan of a dump pouch. If I'm under threat or duress, I'm probably not gonna be worrying about reinserting a mag in that moment, unless I'm topping off or if you have time. It's all very dependent on the situation. So on my kit, chances are if I'm running a belt line along with this as well, I'm gonna have a dump pouch on that. So I can just dump that mag in there real quick and then reinsert it later when I deem it safe. It's just how I think through things. Uh, got a little radio set up, a little faux radio set up. This radio technically isn't hooked up to anything. I'm technically cheating. It's just wider in the back, it's just for the look so you can kind of see what's going on. My biggest complaint about this plate carrier is probably gonna be the tubes they use. I am not a fan of these particular tubes. Uh, I'm a fan of the first beer tubes. These are like the weird different branded tubes. I don't know why. I don't know why, maybe it's to help cut costs, but I don't like it. I also don't like the fact that these are fixed into the plate carrier itself because to me, it's just weird things I don't appreciate. I like it when the tube uh, female connector is attached to Velcro that you can put on the front as well as this being attached to Velcro in the back. This also isn't attached to Velcro, so you have to adjust it with the side panels. You have to adjust it. Uh, with just the, the webbing itself. I'm not a fan of that. That's probably one of my least favorite parts about this carrier in itself is just the side cummerbund setup. 
Uh, you may be a fan of it, but I am not. And, I, and nothing on them, it's just how they design their plate carrier essentially. I am a fan of having the Velcro to where you can adjust it both front and back. To me, it's a lot quicker and then having to deal with the tubes, especially if it's a stretching material, then I like that as well. So they do have Velcro on the back, but it's not as big as a real estate purchase as say, uh, where, where it should be. So if we move to the back real quick, this is a roll one, uh, Ford Observations, Ferro Concepts, Collab, Roll One, Medical, IFAC Pouch. So if you did want to add some sort of stretchy cummerbund, there's not a lot of real estate back here to do so. Kind of a big bummer, but whatever. You can always work around that and have to deal with these kind of hook and loop setups for the side cummerbund. Yet again, going back to wish there was more Velcro here. So you did have the option modularity of adding a stretchy cummerbund. I wish they would have done that, but you gotta realize well, sometimes with gear companies, they are always looking at the minutia of the details of their gear and where they can cut costs, make profit. I'm not accusing Agilite of this, it's just simply business is what you do. So if they have a design that works and they like based off of their country and training and SOPs, then that's what they're gonna do. As you saw that back, that assault pack can flip up and out like that. You can also adjust your assault pack controls from up here. A little bit goofy though, because you're now messing with the adjustment of your shoulder pads. So if you have a bunch of weight on this, it's gonna get messed with. That's why I like the idea of assault pack. You're not messing with your fighting kit, you're just messing with your support kit for that assault pack. But essentially all I gotta do, lift this up and then this will tab out and you can kind of see how that comes undone. But like I was saying, kind of messes with the support structure of the plate carrier itself and how it's fit to your body. So that's just kind of how, so I could be doing certain things wrong that they didn't intend. It's just how my monkey brain works, so keep that in mind. So I do like these little tabs up here. It kind of helps with retaining the comms and what you're going to run with it and keeping wires policed. Now you could always just add some tape and do stuff like that, but a little built-in feature always helps. Now we'll move the radio out of the way. Just a quick little nugget for you guys. I'm always a big fan of using rubber bands or Ranger bands to essentially tighten down your radio to whatever model you're using because this bitch will come loose and it will flop out if you have to use it in a serious way. Uh, trust me, I know I fought people while wearing a radio. A big old little inside pouch up here on the front. So I actually did use this pouch to create a veil at the airsoft event, mainly to hold my lapel mic whenever I wanted to start filming. But if you have other little knickknacks that aren't gonna be too obtrusive, you can throw them in that front little admin pouch. Kind of nice little feature and I don't mind that at all. Now just a real quick thing on the Agilite mag placards. I'll just show you a quick example of what kind of mags will take it. Of course the AR mags are gonna work like a dream. You can technically get away with stuffing a 762 by 39 mag in there but it's gonna be a little bit goofy. You're gonna have to fight to get it out. And then I got a Galil mag over here. Same kind of thing, anything with a tab back there. Give me kind of goofy. This one's a little bit better than the 762 by 39 mag. And then of course, very popular over in Ukraine, our AK-74 mag. Surprisingly works pretty well. Get it in there, get it out. Not as tabby as say, this big old 762 by 39 mag. So that's pretty nice. I do like that reinsertion feature. I think it's very popular. A lot, a lot of people have been digging it, so. Uh, good on them. I like the design, but it's not necessarily the best for carrying a bunch of ammo. But if you're working in a team or a government agency where you're getting paid to carry a gun, then typically you're not going to be out and about for too long and or you would switch up what kind of kit you're using. If you're hearing a lot of pops and gunshots, we are filming on top of the Continental Gilbert. So uh, there's people down there getting after it, pulling some training. So good on them. So I wore this at a 40 hour Airsoft Milsom event and I actually thought it did pretty well. The inside padding is very comfy. I didn't really have a problem with wearing it over that long duration. Of course, when there was lulls or when we were at a patrol base and there was security being pulled, I would dump the armor and get comfy. But as far as stepping off, rucking with it, it wasn't too bad. I think my second assault pack that I was trying to carry with me just didn't integrate well with my gear. So that kind of sucked. But all in all, I would say that the, the plate carrier itself is very comfy once you do get it situated and it fits and sits well to my body type, which is like big lats, getting smaller down to the waist. So if you actually lift is what I'm trying to say. So I think it will be comfy on your person. Uh, fun little thing. I think maybe they had intentions. I could be wrong, but in my head, there's extra essentially material. I think they had intentions for a type of soft body armor to be inserted in here that you could wear with this. That's very reminiscent. This looks kind of like level three body armor, like the, like the Kevlar essentially is what I'm trying to say when I can actually find my words and not be a big dumb chimp chimp. All in all, this is kind of the feature of the plate carrier. I do like it. Still unsure if it'd be my go-to kit in a uh, Russians invading. Be I mean, they'd never pull it off because they can't pull off a normal invasion. But if this was like the Red Dawn scenario, if the, if the world was ending, would this be my go-to kit? I don't know. I like the option of having it in my inventory. But if you're someone who's balling on a budget, 
there may be other options for you. As far as kit goes, I think it's comfy. I think it is slick. I do like the option of having a backpack on there if you want that is integrated with the system. I think that is a cool feature. And though you may not be able to access a lot of the stuff on here alone, you can always take this thing off. You can always take a plate carrier off and access your gear if you need to. I do like that. So all in all, I will say very interesting design. It's always fun to see what the Hebrews come up with over in Israel. Those guys as being in a constant state of fighting and figuring stuff out. I do think they come up with some cool designs and they also have beautiful women subsequently, which I may, may or may not simp for. I'm just kidding, I'm married. I would never do such a thing. Well, gentlemen, that's essentially a quick little nitty gritty look at the Agilite K19. I wanted to start this little series of looking at gear and dived in and kind of giving you my thoughts and opinions. Yet again, take it with a grain of salt. Do your own research, have your own preferences. I'm just a dude on the internet and don't just run out and buy it just because I show it off. Use a little critical thinking when it comes to this stuff. Well, Jim, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the rooftop filming gods, a god of which who enjoys a nice, bright, exposed picture. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel. We have a Discord. Great community in there. It's like a little bacteria. It just grows and has its own little culture. We do giveaways. We do behind-the-scenes footage and videos, as well as I release videos early to my Patreon. You, If you're a Patreon user, will have seen this video first. How great is that? How great is that? As well as merchandise. Merchandise also an excellent way to support the channel. So a big thank you for supporting what we're doing here, and I hope you stick around and watch some more videos. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. Um, uh, let me do the, let me do the intro and the sponsor. Yeah, I got, I got an idea. How wide is it from down low to down high? Uh, so I can't see your feet. Oh, so that's pretty low. All right, ready? I'm going to, I'm going to duck down. You're going to be under the table? Yeah, I'm going to like duck down and I'm going to come up and pop up again over there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So before we go any further, before we go any further, 